what does progressive decentralization mean? And how should we be thinking about that when we're operating in this Web3 space? Yeah, um, I've been thinking a lot about sort of the centralized versus decentralized approach to building companies in the space. And um, a lot of you folks tend to think that it's like a binary. It's like either fully centralized or fully decentralized. Yeah, it's a spectrum. Um, and uh, it's a spectrum like most things. And um, yeah, it's definitely not all or nothing. And I think, you know, part of the challenge is um, when you're building like uh, the approach that I, that I subscribe to that I'm really interested in is this idea of like application based protocol development. So starting with an app and then sort of like progressing down to a broader protocol. Um, and in doing that, a big challenge I've had is what, you know, how do we architect the stack? Do we architect it sort of based on like centralized storage or decentralized storage um, in the, kind of at the beginning, pre-product market fit? How do we think about like financing and resourcing? Like, do we um, have like a carved out treasury for like a downstream sort of like community um, that helps govern? Is there a community that helps govern decisions around product or what goes on? Do we have a core team or do we have bounties where like there's a decentralized engineering organization? Um, are we in person or are we remote? Like being remote is kind of decentralized. Like what are what are the kind of like decentralizable units um, that we need to kind of have in place in the early stages? And how do we think about sort of the milestones if we do really believe in a future that should be decentralized that we need to be hitting? And kind of what are those milestones and what you know, what are the, the units that we can like decentralize first? So sort of like thinking about it quite systematically. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking back to some previous pod discussions. In one episode, I talked to uh, someone named Yuri from SuperDAO, and he really opened my mind to how to think about decentralization from the perspective of their like decentralization is a whole playbook. And, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking and you choose which play you want to run. And so that was uh, that really helped me reframe some of my thinking around it. And then I talked to another guest and he was kind of breaking down sufficient decentralization. Like we just have to hit sufficient decentralization. But that was really from a legal perspective. And now I'm hearing you talk about progressive decentralization. And I'm wondering, all the, of all the things you covered, what is, is there something you can point to that's really important to decentralize? versus other activities where it isn't so much needed? It really depends on the context. I think it's important to like realize how important is something being decentralized um, to your core value proposition? Um, are you building for developers? Is your persona, the user, really only going to build on something that's decentralized? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like thinking about the core value proposition, your users and like kind of building from there, but also like projecting out, you know, if you do want to get to a state where this is sort of like steady state, decent, you know, like decentralized state of the company, how are you working towards that? What do you need to kind of architect today in order for you to get there? Um, in general, pre-product market fit, I think it's really important to get to like stable state. And like in many cases, that does mean some level of centralization like that might mean you know having a core team that's sort of in person like hacking on things together um, before you start sort of like decentralizing aspects of your core team um, but you know if we think about remote work as one example of um, you know preparing for a remote world work there were teams that were better positioned for that they had better documentation they thought about what it might look like to live in a world that's completely remote and COVID sort of forced that word world upon us while other kind of like slower companies that didn't have really good documentation didn't have good practices were sort of, you know, left behind in a way. Um, yeah. So I think that's, that's sort of a good example or parallel to uh, what it might look like to prepare for a decentralized web or a decentralized world. For sure. Yeah, when I was talking with Matt Gould, the CEO at Unstoppable in our previous episode, we we talked about how what we're really focused on is making a decentralized product, like the NFT domain mm -hmm. that sits in, you mint it, sits in your wallet, yours, it's yours. And 
the it's the smart contracts that right now aren't aren't all fully decentralized and and we're working there but right now keeping them in house allows us as a startup to make decisions fast to build the products and feature set that we 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 see as most important right now and also to get integrations because integrations are really what's going to allow this to be potentially uh, oh, an identity of yours in, in the web3 world so yeah. very interesting thing about what you decentralize at first what happens over time but at the core if the product you're building is um is decentralized as an nft i think that is that that's really the the starting point um yep. and also just to throw out there just in in this might be a good question for you do you know how many times decentralization is mentioned in the bitcoin white paper no idea how many times zero it's mentioned zero times the word decentralization which is just interesting um because it, it's security is much more of a concern than decentralization obviously decentralization is mm -hmm. one of the ways you get the security but that word is not mentioned so it's it's interesting how we have that conversation so much on twitter yeah. and, and whatnot but uh in the white paper the thing that started it all it's not mentioned you're listening to the unstoppable podcast the go-to place for everyone to learn about the latest innovations in Web3, NFTs, and the decentralized web. Welcome to the Metaverse.